One of the most remarkable stories of the white slave trade centers around Thomas Pebble and his crewmates on the Francis. And that is what this book, White Gold, is about. Okay. Let's look at some of the reviews. Very well researched, a great page turner. This book was spectacular. It reads like fiction novel, but it is actually a heavily researched history book. Very eye-opening and rekindled my interest in medieval North Africa and the Middle East. I had very high expectations for this book, as I had no prior knowledge of the subject. It was by all means an eye-opener, as this, as this topic has largely been ignored or forgotten. Yes, and that is my design. In White Gold, Giles Milton, author of Nathaniel's Nutmeg, How One Man's Courage Changed the Course of History, brings his style of narrative history to an examination of the trade in white slaves. Initially, I was under the impression that this book is a historical novel, so I wasted the first 20 pages waiting for the novel to start. Once I realized it was actually historical Nonfiction, I started, etc. One of the most gripping true stories I've ever read about a backwater in history I have never come across would make a spellbinding movie in the right hands. Absolutely, but that's one movie that will never be made. It's just not going to happen. I appreciate the optimism, but it's not going to happen. I'm going to put in the term black slave and see what comes up. I put in the term black slave, and here's one of the things we get. If my padre was to believe these tiny chunks were evidence of one of the darkest chapters in human history, every hand glazed mosaic in this monumental palace, every broken column and battlement had been built and crafted by an army of Christian slaves flogged by black slave drivers and held in filthy slave pens. Many of these accounts were to be found only in manuscript. The extraordinary journal of John Whitehead, a British slave in Meknes, remains unpublished to this day. Others were printed in such small quantities that only a handful of copies survived. A very rare volume by the French Padre, Jean de la Fay, turned up at St. Anthony's College, Oxford. Now I'm going to type in the term black guard. Click go. And as you see, there are many references to the black guard of Muley Ishmael. And if we go to Wikipedia, Muley Ishmael, Ib Sharif. Tells us a little bit about the Black Guard. Mule Ishmael is also known as a fearsome ruler and used at least 25 slaves for the construction of his capital. He's referring to the white slaves. His Christian slaves, code word for white slaves, were often used as bargaining counters with European powers, selling them back their captured subjects for inflated sums or for rich gifts. Most of his slaves were obtained by Barbary pirates in raids on Western Europe. Over 150,000 men from sub-Saharan Africa served in his elite black guard. By the time of Ishmael's death, the guard had grown tenfold, the largest in Moroccan history. So let's go back to the book. If we have an eyewitness account by a white slave who came into contact with Mule Ishmael and his black guard. Mule Ishmael was dependent on his renegades to quash rebellions, yet he never trusted them in the way he did his infamous Bukhari or black guard. By the way, they were called the black guard. Because they were black and for no other reason. So let's not rewrite history there. Doesn't matter how we feel about this. What we should be interested in is the truth, the whole truth, 
the and nothing but the unadulterated, unfiltered, absolute truth, regardless of how it may make us feel emotionally. Okay? It doesn't matter who's good or who's bad or what's right or what's wrong. What we should be interested in is what is the truth. Because when we don't get the truth, there's always an agenda and it's never in our best interest. This formidable fighting force provided the black backbone to Mule Ishmael's rule. From its rank came his personal bodyguards, his crack troops, and his slave drivers. So what he's telling you is that not only were the infamous black guard the backbone, behind his rule, but they were the slave drivers, the sub-Saharan black Africans. And I don't know why those who choose to lie and deny are so afraid of the truth. And I don't know why those who prefer ignorance over truth ignore these things, and then they try to come up with preposterous excuses when they are presented. And they hate the fact that they are being presented. The Black Guard was fiercely loyal and highly trained, and the troops never wavered in their devotion. Fleeing from Mule Ishmael's Morocco was indeed a perilous undertaking. Informers were scattered throughout the countryside, and the Black Guard kept a constant watch on the movements of slaves and renegades. It's amazing how many people come to my channel who obviously don't know anything. Implying and inferring that uh, somehow white people were either uh, indigenous to North Africa or that they just showed up one day voluntarily. They totally ignore the well-documented historical accounts of the fact that a large, large, large number of Caucasians were taken back to North Africa against their will as slaves. And many of them were enslaved and under the whip and rule of black people. Absolutely. They also want to deny... The, uh, they want to assume that if there were blacks involved in the Moorish expansion and the Moorish empires, that they were slaves. And they totally ignore the fact that the primary involvement that any white people had, for the most part, especially in the beginning with the uh, Muslim expansion, was as slaves. In fact, it says here that uh, Mullah Ismail used, let's see, what was that at? Mullah Ismail is also known as a fearsome ruler. This is on uh, Wikipedia under Ismail Eib Sharif. It's also known as a fearsome ruler and used at least 25 slaves for the construction of his capital. So I want you to imagine 25 slaves. 25 slaves, but I obviously meant 25,000 slaves. slaves uh, building the capital and the majority. And this, you know, like I said, there's a white man telling you this. And it's well documented. There are many books that talk about this. Many accounts written by the white slaves themselves. who talks about the black slave drivers and how they basically enforce the Muslim rule over their white slaves. Now, most of the slaves were obtained by Barbary pirates in raids on Western Europe. I'm going to show you a uh, very famous image of Barbary pirates in Europe. Let's see. I type in the word the four Moors, and uh, we get this. Now, this very famous image is called the four Moors. You want to know a little bit of history about it? Let's talk first about the statue. I made other videos where I've discussed this before, so this is nothing new. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure which one of these pages is going to give us a good account on the story. But these four Moors represent the Barbary pirates that are being discussed in the book White Gold. Because uh, they literally captured thousands of ships off the coast of Europe and brought, them, brought the uh, passengers back to North Africa as slaves. You see, uh, Sicilians had uh, black blood pumping through their hearts. 
Uh, no, if you, if, if you don't believe me, uh, you can look it up. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, uh, you see, uh, the Moors conquered Sicily. And the Moors are niggas. See, see, way back then, uh, Sicilians were like uh, wops from northern Italy. Uh, they all had blonde hair and blue eyes. But, uh, well, then the Moors moved in there and, uh, well, they changed the whole country. They did so much fucking with Sicilian women, huh, that they changed the whole bloodline forever. That's why blonde hair and blue eyes became black hair and dark skin. You know, it's absolutely amazing to me to think that to this day, hundreds of years later, that uh, that Sicilians still carry that nigga gene. Now, this <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm quoting history. It's written. It's a fact that's written. I love this guy. It's written. It's a fact that's written. It's written. It's a fact that's written. Quoting history. It's written. It's a fact that's written. I love this guy. I love this guy.